When I first started IPC Well, I thought that it would be easy to get nursing homes to report their infectious disease data into the CDC. What I realized is that I actually had to start from step one with basic infection control practices such as hand hygiene before we could even think about entering their data into the CDC. What's really critical is that there is a boots on the ground or in-person support for these nursing homes. The traditional response is remote, whether it's the phone or even a Zoom, and, and this is how we've traditionally helped our nursing homes. But what's critical is that we actually are in the building, working side by side with the staff. This helps develop relationships and a, a building of trust. If we have trust, then we can really dig down into the deeper issues and we can solve the problems. We can truly work on reducing the harms and deaths that are caused by these infections. When I was 19, both my grandparents, Mimi and Didi, lived out their last days in a nursing home. I wasn't equipped or educated or even, I didn't know where to, what to do to even support and help them. I was just glad that they were getting the help that they needed when they were close to 90 years old. Today, what my goal is, is to bring education, training, and awareness, not only in this healthcare setting, but to the consumer, so that we are equipped to deliver the best care possible to these vulnerable residents that deserve to die with dignity and deserve the best care possible. I've been in hundreds of nursing homes across the country. I've worked with Doctors Without Borders, the CDC, and many other organizations to help promote, educate, and train healthcare workers and improve the care that's being delivered in this healthcare setting. I am on a mission to change the way our elders are treated and given care at the end of their lives to reduce the harms and deaths from these preventable infectious diseases.